At around noon, Monroeville police received a phone call concerning a possible dead body in the woods on Rosecrest Drive. Police and EMS arrived at the scene and located a deceased female laying face down in the woods with a COVID mask on her face. They secured the scene, then requested the homicide unit to investigate. While on the scene, investigators found out that a missing vehicle was found and a missing person was reported from just the day before. Although there were no identifications just yet, their concerns grew for the missing woman named Christina Spacuza. 38-year-old Christina Spacuza, also known as Christy, was born and raised in Monroeville, Pennsylvania. She was a loving mother of four children who enjoyed art, crafting, and Bible study. She also had a longtime boyfriend and fiance who was living with her. Once investigators found a body and vehicle on February 12th, they contacted her fiance, Brandon Mardo, for an interview. Christy was an Uber driver and would often leave her fiance and kids to do her Uber runs. She would usually check in with her fiance while out and about on her rides. Her fiance also previously purchased a dash camera for her safety in the vehicle but he stopped hearing from Christy at about 9 p.m. on the night of February 10th. The next day, he reported her missing when she never returned back home. Police then realized the recovered vehicle belonged to Christy. Her fiance also mentioned that when he went to the vehicle recovery site earlier in the day, he noticed that the dash camera wasn't inside the vehicle in its usual place, along with her cell phone. However, he provided the police with details of her phone and passcode. The police then contacted Uber to see Christy's trip history, and that's where they saw her last ride began at 9.13 p.m. and was requested by Tania Mullen. That same day, the police were contacted by an individual who found a pink cell phone, and when they tried to access the phone to return to its owner, they discovered that it was password protected in an airplane mode. The police used the passcode provided by her fiance and it immediately unlocked and the phone number was Christie's. The deceased body was also confirmed to be Christie's Bakuza. The following day on February 13th, an autopsy was conducted and revealed that she died of a single gunshot wound that entered her head on the back left side and exited out of her right cheek. Her manner of death was ruled a homicide. The downloads of Christie's phone show that she arrived in the area requested of her last ride and arrived at the desired destination at 9.33 p.m. Suddenly her phone was removed from the charger and around 9.40 p.m. she was on Wallace Avenue where the following apps on her phone were accessed. Dollar Bank, PayPal, Square Up Cash, and Venmo. All of these apps are forms of money transfers. However, a quick check of her accounts revealed that there was no recent activity. Her fiancé shared that they used the Dollar Bank app for Uber payments and transfers, but the two were very low on cash. He said in their last conversation that Christy stated she spent the last of her available funds at Steel City Vape in Monroeville just before picking up her last ride. At 10.11 p.m., her phone traveled towards Triboro Expressway, where her license plate is red, and 10 minutes later, her phone is in the general vicinity of Rosecrest Drive, where she was later found deceased. However, her vehicle and phone continued to travel to numerous locations, despite being on airplane mode. Eventually, it stops and ends up where the vehicle and cell phone were later found. Detectives finally made contact with Tanaya Mullen, the last requested ride, to speak with her. She agreed and came to the station with her boyfriend, 22-year-old Calvin Crew, who lived with her. The detectives were aware of Calvin's outstanding warrant for a gun charge, so he was immediately taken into custody. His girlfriend, on the other hand, was being questioned. She said she was at Swissvale when she received a call from Calvin, asking her to order an Uber for him. 
She said that he gave her an address, so she ordered it for him at 8.53 p.m. Later that night at around 10.30, she received a FaceTime call from him asking when she was going to be home. He was at the porch of her place waiting for her to get back so she could let him in. She also mentioned that she purchased a gun a year prior for her own protection, but it went missing when she took it to a birthday party for a member of Calvin's family. She admitted that she had a feeling Calvin had her gun, as he was the only person around her, but he has always denied it. Detectives interviewed Calvin the same day, and he confirmed that she did order an Uber for him so that he could get mail and tax return information from an old address. He said he was picked up by a white woman, dropped off, went to his destination, and took the bus back home. After police told him there was surveillance video at the bus stop he claimed to have been at, he said he was wearing a puffy jacket and dark sweatpants, so it shouldn't be hard to find him. But upon seeing the surveillance, they did not find him anywhere at the date and times he claimed to have been there. Also, he never retrieved any mail as the current occupant of his old address said he never stopped by. The next day, detectives interviewed Calvin along with his mother. While police were trying to inform his mother on the homicide investigation and Calvin's claims, he butted in numerous times with revised accounts. He then said he never knocked on the door of his old address, he just checked the mail and left. He also wasn't sure if there was any mail for him, he just figured since it was tax season he wanted to get his taxes done. He also changed the bus route he initially claimed. His girlfriend consented to a phone search, and it revealed that she sent several texts, with one at 9.42 p.m. saying, whatever you're doing tonight, be careful. He texts her at 10.51 p.m. saying, cash up on weird shit. I swear to God, I'ma try again in a little and restart my phone. I'm sending it, but it's not completing. Three minutes later, Tanaya sends him, I'm not going to jail if we get caught. Police did not speculate on that message and thus did not charge Tanaya with anything as of yet. On February 17th, while canvassing a few areas, detectives found the missing Blue Sky C B2W HD camera that was missing from Christie's car. They were able to view footage from the mini SD card. I will warn you now before it plays, it is terrifying to watch, so viewers' discretion is seriously advised. Hi, Virginia. How are you today? Prosecutors played what could be their most compelling evidence against Calvin Crew. 20 minutes of dash cam footage from Christy Spacuza's Uber, showing the last moments her family will see her alive. Police say this is Calvin Crew getting into the back seat of Spacuza's Uber. His hood is up and he's wearing an all black face mask that covers all but his glowing eyes. He sits still, only muttering a word or two. 10 minutes into the ride, Spacuza cheerfully asks, Did you have a good day today? He mumbles and Spacuza says, That's good. 18 minutes into the ride, police say crew inches to the middle of the back seat and then pulls out a gun, grabs Spacuza's ponytail, and presses the pistol to the back of her head. What are you doing? This is a gun. Keep driving. No, it's not. Stop. Come on, man. I got a family. What are you doing? I got doing? a family, too. Now drive. What are you doing? Drive. Please stop. Drive the car, miss. I have four kids. What are you doing? Not much information is yet available on 22-year-old Calvin Crew, but what is known is that he has a criminal history dating back to his youth. Looking into it, he had robbery and theft charges from when he was underage. As previously mentioned, he was wanted on 2020 gun charges when the murder occurred. According to detectives, Calvin tried to rob Christie, then held her captive for almost an hour while she begged for her life. They believe his motive was to rob Christie and what he actually obtained from all he's caused has yet to be revealed. Calvin is charged with criminal homicide, robbery, robbery of a motor vehicle, firearms not being carried without a license, and tampering with physical evidence. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty. He still remains in jail without bond, and there is still an investigation on the case with more to unravel. 
Since Christie's murder, her fiancé expressed his grief in a Facebook post. Additionally, Uber has banned Calvin and his girlfriend's accounts. In response, they also said Uber is deeply committed to the safety of riders and drivers, and its app has an emergency button that users can use to call or text 911, which then surfaces the real-time location and trip information. The tragic homicide left other rideshare drivers in the area terrified. Some became extra vigilant, while others stop driving altogether as they do not want to risk their lives until more safety measures are put in place. Anybody can put their name saying, oh, I'm so-and-so, but they don't check. This case is such a terrifying tragedy as nobody could have expected such senseless violence to take place. Christy is survived by her four children and fiance whom she was sadly taken from. I often wonder what was gained through any of this for Calvin, other than a free ride and stay in prison. For any rideshare drivers watching, please stay safe, install a barrier between you and your riders in your vehicle, and be aware of third-party riders. May Christina rest in paradise and her fiancé and four children find ease in their grief and justice in the courts. Thank you all for watching.